So what did you do? You visualize it, you see it. What did you do, if anything? Um, I ended up, I, I seen it as I'm driving by. I turned my car around, pulled into the driveway, took a little better look at it from inside my car, um, snapped a couple photos of it with my cell phone, snapped a photo of the address of the house, and then I uh, proceeded back to the command center. All right, I want to mark a couple of exhibits and show you a couple of uh, photographs and ask if you recognize these. These are going to be people's proposed 14 and 15. This is 14. And this is 15. Showing you 14 and 15. You can look at the back for your own. Do you recognize what I've showed you? Yes, I do. And uh, describe first what number 15 is. The back, so you're talking about the right one. 15 is a uh, photo of the dirt bike that I took that day uh, with my cell phone um, parked next to a yellow Ford Mustang. And what is uh, the next photo, please? It's a, uh, the same dirt bike. Um, I took the same photo, and uh, it's just a zoomed-in photo of um, 14, right, so or 15, I'm sorry. 14 is a zoomed-in photo of 15. You know, I marked it right. I should have put 14 and 15 the other way, but we have what we have. So, Judge, I'm going to move at this point then okay, to admit... Okay, let me just, for my records, 15 is the zoom-in photo, and 14 is the regular? 14 is zoomed in, 15 is zoomed out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any objection to admitting? No objection. Thank you. Very good. <clears throat> Could you put up number 15, please, which is the zoomed out photograph? That's a photograph that you took? Yes. This is July 25th, is that correct? July 25th, correct. The day after the night when April was found? Yes. Do you know about what time of day this was? Yes, I believe it was right around 5.45 p.m. And then could we uh, play this just to show the closer up? This is 14. That's just a closer up picture of the motorcycle? Correct. Now, the fact that you saw that bike did you have any particular tip that led you to that bike, that motorcycle, that particular one? That specific one at that location? Yes. No. Did you have a tip or were you acting on a tip about a bike similar to that? Acting on a tip of a bike similar to that. A similar description, I guess, would <coughs> use that word. Correct. So you gathered that information, you took the address, did you make any contact with anybody at that house? Not at that moment. What did you do next? Uh, I went back to the command center, um, briefed a, um, the OIC that was at the command center, a couple other detectives that were there at the time. Um, looking at the bike, I'm not a, a dirt bike person, per se. Um, I wanted to see if this was, in fact, the type of bike that the uh, the tip was speaking about the on road off road style bike possibly um, it was and um, so at that point we made a determination to go back out there make contact with the homeowner and uh, gather some more information about the bike. Is this still on the same date, the 25th? Yes. So you go back into the command post, look what I found, show pictures, and then discussion and the decision is made to go back out. Correct. Who went back out with you? Uh, I went out with uh, Trooper Derek Hoffman. The two of you? Yep. Did you make contact with somebody at that house? Yes, we did. Was the motorcycle, that bike, was it there? No. Do you recall who it was you spoke with at that location? Yes. Who? James Muse. James Muse. Yes, M-U-S-E. And did you inquire about the motorcycle? I did. Did you gain and gather some information about the motorcycle? I did. Did you gather owner information? I did. But again, to be clear, by the time you got back, it's gone. The bike was gone, correct. So based on the information you gathered, 
Did you take any further step after talking to Mr. Muse? What did you do next? Uh, took the information he gave us, which was general information, a name, um, uh, location, a person, not address, but you know, a, a town that he lives in and, and different things. Took that information, went back, um, worked on some databases, pulling up that information through our lien, um, and located who we believed was the owner of the bike based on the information that was provided. All right, was that name that you came up with consistent or not with the name that was given to you by Mr. Muse? It was consistent. All right, so did you go out to uh, where you thought the bike would be? We did. Who's we? Uh, myself, well, we, we, once we got that information, relayed that information, had another briefing at the command center, okay. um, determined we want to go out to that house at that time. Um, even though it was late, it was 11, 11.30 at night, um, and made contact with that person. So myself, Detective uh, Van Single, and uh, Trooper Derek Hoffman went back out, went out to the house um, on Marquette. Let me ask you something. Why not wait till the next day? Um, because you got to, it, it, there's a, a lot of tips coming in. This is information that we felt was important. It was a tip that came in on a bike that I felt at the time matched. And, you know, it's not something someone's dead. It's not something you want to wait on. I didn't just decide to go to bed and start the next day. No. So you go out there at about 11, 11.30 at night. Correct. Yourself? Who else? Uh, Detective Van Single. Okay. And Trooper Derek Hoffman. So Trooper Derek Hoffman is the same person who went with you to the Muse. Right? He was. And he came with us. He was in uniform. It was later at night. Okay. Anytime we had contact, like to have a uniform with us. So did you go? Where did you go? Uh, we went to the Marquette address. And uh, is that an address in St. Clair County? Yes. Is that in Goodells, Michigan? Yes. So when you say Marquette, it's a street Correct. address, something, something Marquette in Goodells, Michigan? Yes. Okay. Describe what happened when you got there. Uh, went to the front door, knocked on the door. Um, an older gentleman answered. I asked to speak to uh, uh, James Van Callis. He said he was James Van Callis. I asked him if there was another James Van Callis, maybe a son. He said there was. Um, I asked him if I could talk to him. He yelled in the house for uh, a James Van Callis or James, however he called him. Um, uh, at that time, the defendant came to the door. Um, he ended up coming out on the porch. Um, the original uh, James Van Callis answered the door. Um, it was determined later that's his father. He also came out on the porch, as well as a female came out on the porch. The person, not the person who answered the door, but the person who came out in response to asking for James, the other James Van Callis, did that person, do you see that person in the courtroom? I do. Would you, so you do recognize that person? Yes, I do. Where is that person? Uh, you see the defense counsel, N seat, wearing a uh, black dress shirt and a gold multicolor tie. Yeah, the record reflects he's identified as the defendant. Michelle. Thank you. So he, the defendant's out there. Did you indicate the first gentleman, Mr. Van Callis, he was out there? Yes, his father. And you indicated a woman came out? Yes. At that point, you knew there were two individuals named James Van Callis, and you later determined one was father and one was son. Did you know that night who that first, the other woman was? Did you know who that was? No. Did you ask a name? I didn't ask a name. I assumed who it was. But you um, didn't know. No, I did not know. So you, based on the way people were behaving and talking, you made some assumptions. Correct. Okay. Did you uh, interview the woman that night? No. What did you do? Um, I asked the defendant some questions. What did you ask him? I asked him. Uh, I told him we were doing an investigation in Armada. Um, asked him there was some information that he was in Armada uh, the day before. Did you tell him the nature of the investigation? I mean, there's there's a disorderly conduct and you know fireworks people, and then there's. It came out. I don't know if I told him right at that moment, but I know it had already been on the news, um, so it it was talked about. Yes, that that this was the homicide investigation that happened in Armada. All right. So what did you ask him? I asked him if he was in Armada the day before. And what did he say? He said he was. Did he tell you anything else? Did you ask anything else, or did he tell you anything else about his whereabouts in Armada? He did. I did, and he did. I asked him if he can tell me what went on. Um, 
when he went through Armada, you know, kind of give me a rough timeline of, of what he was doing there. Um, at that point, he proceeded to tell me that he left his house around 5 o'clock or so that evening. This would be on the 24th. Um, he drove in towards Armada. He was heading over to his brother Donnie's house, um, who lives outside of Armada. He said he stopped by uh, James Muse, a friend of his house, um, pulled by or slowed down, stopped in the driveway, didn't see James, so he didn't stop. Um, this is James Muse he's referring to? Yes, James okay. Muse on Armada Ridge. Um, he said he then continued into um, Armada and stopped at a marathon gas station there in the center of town. Um, Did he tell you why he stopped? I had two different interviews with him at one point, I don't recall if it was the first one, but he did, he did mention he had stopped there to take a break because of the seat on his bike is uncomfortable and his butt started to hurt from riding the bike. So he told you he went to the marathon? Yes. Again, where is the marathon located? It's, um, is it in Armada? It's right downtown Armada, just, just east of the light in Armada. Several blocks from the Cole Orchard Trail? Yes, it's to the north of the, if you went straight south down that side street, you would run right into the trail. Was he giving you any general time frames that he was in Armada at the marathon? Uh, he just the time at that point, just the time that he left his house, which was around 5 o'clock, 5, 5.30, um, that he left his house to head towards Armada. He said he had um, stopped at the marathon. Um, he then continued, tried to get all of his brother, then continued outside of Armada, uh, on the west side of Armada to his brother Donnie's house, but his brother Donnie wasn't home. He said he then continued to Tim Hortons in Romeo to see if his brother had stopped there. Um, he drove through the lot at Tim Hortons in Romeo, didn't see his brother, and then continued back towards his brother's house again to where he found his brother at home. To the best of your recollection, in that time you talked to him, did he give you any times that he got to his brothers? No, I don't think he gave me a time that he arrived at his brothers. Okay. Did was there any other purpose in, in you going there that night aside from asking him these questions? Did you look at any items? Did you ask to see any items? Oh I did. And what did you ask for and why? Um, after he gave a, a kind of his timeline of, of where he was and everything, I asked him what he was wearing, um, to which he gave me a full description of what he was wearing. Okay. Um, by the way, let's pick up at the full description of what he was wearing, but I kind of left you off and jumped to the next topic. He's told you he went to his brother's house and eventually met up with his brother at his brother's house, correct? Correct. And that was Donald Van Callis? Donald Van Callis, yes. He gave you that name? Yeah, I, th I think he said Donald. I know he said Donnie at one point, but he might have told me Donald as well. Donnie or Donald. Correct. Donald. Yep. And uh, did he tell you then that he left Donnie's house at any point? He said he stayed there for a little while, an hour or so, and that he left. Um, I don't think he gave me a time that he left other than he said he left before dark. And if I remember right, he said he let, wanted to get going before dark because he's worried about the deer with riding his dirt bike. He's worried about the deer coming across the road. Okay. Um, so now he's taking himself back home. Did he indicate whether or not he went out again that night at all? No, nope. he told me once he got home that night, he stayed in. He didn't go back out at all. Did he tell you any other location other than the ones you've indicated? Going to the Marathon gas station, uh, going by Mr. Muse's house, going by the Tim Hortons where he didn't locate his brother, and then ultimately going back to his brother's house, or going to his brother's house. No other locations. Did you ask to see any items? You indicated a, full, a description of his clothing, is that right? Correct. What did he tell you? Uh, he told me that he was, uh, he was driving his dirt bike, he had his black helmet on, um, a Carhartt hoodie sweatshirt, um, camouflage pants, and K-Swiss tennis shoes. Did you ask to see the uh, motorcycle? I did. And did you in fact see it? Yes. Did you ask to see the helmet? I did. Did you in fact see it? Yes, I did. And uh, he indicated to you 
that he was wearing some K-Swiss shoes? Correct. And uh, did he show you those? Yes, he did. I'm going to mark some proposed exhibits. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. from where you are? I can turn, yeah. Or you can stand up next to it if that helps you. Since they're admitted, I'm just going to display them. First, 16. Do you recognize what that is? Yes. What is that? That is uh, his bike that he directed us to on the side of the house that evening. said that was the bike he was riding the day before in Armada. So that, that picture is taken at like 11.30 at night. 11.30, almost 12 o'clock, correct. <coughs> 17. What is that? That would be the helmet he provided to us. Said that was the helmet he had been wearing the night before. Do you know whose hand that was? Just like just. Um, I believe that was either mine or that was uh, Trooper Derek Hoffman because uh, Detective uh, Van Single took the actual photo. All right. This is going to be 18. What is that? That's just another angle of the helmet um, sitting on a chair on the front porch there where we were talking. Sir, please feel free to get up if you need to. Yeah, you're leaning way Thanks, up. Your Honor. Stand up. Go ahead. 19. What is that? Um, kind of blurry picture of the shoes that okay. he uh, showed us he was wearing. Are those K-Swiss shoes? Those are. All right, did you also take another picture of those shoes or yes. have another picture taken? Yeah, we took, uh, we flipped them over and took a picture of the bottoms. Of why? Because um, that's relevant to uh, the case. Very general terms. I'm not asking you to be an expert, but why did you think that was relevant to the case? Um, Take a picture of the bottom of the shoes. There had been uh, photos of, uh, of tread patterns that were taken at the autopsy and at the uh, crime scene on the victim. So you, you saw fit to take a picture of the bottom of the shoes that night at 1130? Absolutely. All right. Um, I'm going to show you now... If you saw that motorcycle helmet again itself, would you recognize that? Yes, I would. shown this to defense counsel. I'm going to ask you to take a look at that. And if you would, uh, tell me the record. Yep. This would be the, uh, the helmet that he provided that evening when asked what he was wearing the day before. All right, I'm moving to admit 21. No objection, Your Honor. 21. And just for the record, that it is the actual helmet. That's the actual helmet, Your Honor. What was the primary reason you went back out there with uh, especially? 
um, to ask more specific questions as to the information he gave us. Um, and I also wanted to, him to provide a written statement as to the information he gave me the evening before. Are we talking about 12 hours later, you're back out at that location on Marquette Road in Wills? A little less than 12 hours, yes. A little less than 12 hours. I think it was about 10.30 in the morning I was out there. Okay. Was anybody there for you to speak with? Yes, I talked to the defendant. Talked to the defendant again? Yep. Um, Where did you talk to him? On his front porch. Did you see the motorcycle again? Yes. Did anybody else, is anybody else there while you were talking? Nobody was right with us. I don't remember if his father might have been there at the door when I first showed up, but not nobody was with us when we talked this time like the night before, no. Was the woman that you'd seen previously, was she there? No. By the way, I won't go back to that night before. I asked you if you interviewed her, you indicated no. Is that right? Correct. Do you recall if you gathered uh, biographical information about her? Who she was, how old she was, things of that sort? No, we didn't get we didn't get um, that type of information from her that night. No. Was she out there the whole time you were talking to her? Yeah, she came oh, out not to her to, to Mr. Mankell. She came out right after he came out onto the court. She came out. Um, the dad came out. He came out, and she came out with him. Followed him out. And so the discussion takes place on the porch primarily that night. Yes. Did she was she standing by Mr. Mankell's side that that night? Um, I think him and his father. There were chairs on a couple chairs on the front porch. I remember they both were sitting in a chair. Um, Mr. Van Callis, the defendant, was off to the right on the porch and it sitting in a chair. She just kind of squatted down next to him. She squatted down next to him? Yeah, that's where she was during it. So going back now to the, the about 12 hours, 11 and a half, 12 hours later, you're there. You don't see her that day? No. And did you ask uh, your questions that you wanted to ask, or were you just trying to get a written statement, or what was it? Um, I think the first thing I asked him was, uh, I told him I was wondering if he had time to come in to the office and provide a written statement on the information that he gave us the night before. Um, at that time, he told us he was kind of busy, that he had some things he had to go take care of, um, possibly at his sister's or for his sister in the Richmond, New Haven area. Um, and that he might be available in the afternoon. Did you indicate part of what you were looking for was a written statement about? Yeah, I told him that. Did you indicate whether or not you were looking for more detail at all? Did you use words like that? You're trying to get a more detailed account, or is that something that I'm No, I don't think I told him I was looking for a more detailed account. The first thing it was is basically I wanted to get the a written statement on what he had told me the night before. OK. And he indicated to you what you just said? Correct. Did you, how long were you there? Um, we were there for a little bit. Since he wasn't going to come and give a, a written statement at that time, um, I started kind of going over the timeline he had gave me the night before just to kind of verify things and see if everything, you know, lined back up with the same thing he told me the night before. And what information did you learn? Um, he gave me roughly the same information. The only thing I think that was kind of different was he told me when he first left the house, I want to say he told me um, he left the house that day about 5 o'clock. He was a little more exact. And that when he got about 10 miles away from the house, he turned around because he remembered he forgot his sunglasses. He went back to the house, ended up staying at the house, hanging out with his dad till about 5.30 when he left again. And then proceeded to basically tell me the same thing that he told me the night before. Did you gain any clarity in terms of what time he arrived at his brother's house, what time exactly he was part of his brother's house, things of that sort? No, he didn't. He wasn't very clear on any times other than um, when he left at 5 o'clock and that he left again back at 5.30. That was the uh, pretty much the most clear he was at times. So how did you end your interaction with him that day? Um, well, we asked, I, I wanted to see the motorcycle again because it was daylight. 
So we went around to the uh, side of the house again where the motorcycle was. He brought us around to the side of the house. The motorcycle was parked kind of close to the wall. Um, I asked him if he could pull the motorcycle away from the wall just so I can get photos. I didn't want to pull it away because I didn't want to drop it. Then I'd have to pay for it. Um, so I had him pull the bike away from the wall, took a couple more photos of it in the daylight. Uh, at that time, I, um, I asked him again what time he thinks he would be done with the, uh, the things he needed to take care of. And he said after a couple hours, I gave him a number and told him if he could call me in the afternoon when he's done and then you know hopefully we can get together and do the written statement. And uh, I told him if it got later in the day, I didn't hear from him, I'll just give him a call. That's how we left it. That's how you left it? Yes, sir. How long were you there? 45 minutes. Maybe. So you saw the, the motorcycle in the day? Correct. Have you seen the motorcycle additional times in the daylight, up close? I've seen During the course of the investigation? Yeah, I've seen it again at that house. All right. Are you, uh, so if I show you some photographs, you might be able to identify those? Correct. People's proposed 22, 23. Ask if you recognize what these are. Yep, those are additional pictures of the same motorcycle. And those are some daylight or daytime pictures of that motorcycle. Correct. That same motorcycle you saw outside Mr. Muses that first, the day after the homicide? Yes, it is. Same motorcycle you saw on the 25th outside at 11.30 at night? Correct. Same motorcycle than you saw on the 26th that Saturday morning at about 10 30, 11 morning? Correct. I move to admit 22 and 23. No objection, Your Honor. So, who was to contact who as you part of this? Uh, I asked him to contact me when he was done with the things he, he indicated he had to take care of. And I basically told him if it got later in the day and I didn't hear from him, I'll just give him a call. And what was the nature, like in 20 some years as a state trooper and a detective and a detective sergeant, you, you interact with a lot of people. Yeah, right? a lot of people. Uh, interview people, right? Yes. Suspects, witnesses, victims, yes, informants, all kinds of people, right? Yes. Um, what was your interaction with him? The nature of that that, that night you interacted with him, the twenty fifth. So, was it friendly? Was it angry? Was it contentious? Was it the first casual? What was it? How did you feel? No, it was it was friendly. It was casual. It was just us, you know, asking about you know his his whereabouts and everything. Um, in Armada, it was very casual, very friendly. Well, what about the next morning, about 12 hours later, when you asked for the written statement? It was, it was still friendly. He, he indicated he was busy, um, but it was still friendly. Did you have contact with him then later in the day? If you parted ways and there was supposed to be a phone call, did you have additional contact? Yes, yeah, so over the phone. Who called him? I initially called him um, later in the afternoon. There was no answer. I left a message and then received a phone call back from him. And did that phone call connect? Yes. Did you speak to him? Yes, I did. And what was that phone call like? Um, he was very upset uh, to the point where he was irate on the phone. Um, he was yelling at me on the phone, telling me that it was a witch hunt, um, that we are trying to call and talk to all kinds of people and take people's cell phones. Um, it was just more of an out-of-control type phone call. That was different from what had occurred earlier in the morning. Very different. Did he at least agree to give you the written statement as he had indicated earlier? I 
tried to calm him down on the phone and explain to him that we are investigating a homicide of a young girl, um, <coughs> that we have to follow up on every single tip. All right, I'm gonna, so you indicated you have to follow up on every single tip? Yes. Did he, I'll try to ask in the yes or no fashion, did he ultimately provide you with a written statement? No. Is that because you told him you changed your mind? No. When you went there the night of the 25th, do you remember where the motorcycle was parked? On the east side of the house. Is that a driveway on the grass? It's, it's like a, um, the driveway has a, a circle to it in front of the house, but then it kind of branches off along the east side of the house. And there's like a big cement pad um, that kind of goes up to the house on the east side as well. So it's all cement there, kind of like a driveway where you can pull right up, right up to the house and park. And what about the next day when you went there? I was in the same location on the side of the house. All right. And uh, do we have those pictures, by the way, just to show the jury the daylight pictures? Yes, 22, please. So that's a daytime flight. That's 22. You've already testified you recognize that. Yes. On the shocks on the front, do you see a particular color of those shocks? Yes, blue. And what about the fender in the front? Black. And then what about over the rear tires? Uh, white. Do you see a headlight on that motorcycle? Yes. Well, was there also a license plate? Yes. Did there come a time then uh, his days progress and your investigation continue? By the way, you've already told the jury there were other officers going out and, and working on tips. Different officers were coming in and briefing the group. Did that effort continue? The whole time, yes. Do you know if there was a search of the defendant's residence? Yes, there was. Were you part of executing that search warrant? Yes, I was. Do you remember when that search warrant, the initial search warrant was? I believe it was the following Wednesday, uh, 30th. Were you part of the, uh, so you're familiar with that property then? Were you out there? Yes, I was. And I know you were already there, but did you take a longer and larger and more expansive view of the property when you were executing the search warrant? Yes. Good <clears throat> one, seized from the residence on that day? That worked. Do you know if uh, do you know if the motorcycle helmet was seized that day? That you've already testified to? Yes it was. In case Swiss shoes? Yes. Now there were were there a number of officers there that day? There was a large number, yes.
Judge, I think I'm, I'm moving to admit without objection people's proposed 24 through 29. No objection on behalf of the defense. Would you display 24, please? Describe what that is. Uh, that would be the Van Cowen residence. And you talked about it's like, like a circle drive and a drive that circled around. Tell the jury where that motorcycle was when you when you went out there. This, that first. this would be the circle drive from the roadway down here. Circles up around. This would be the pad I was talking about. How this driveway comes around. There's a the cement pad that just drives right up to the house right here. The bike was parked over in this location where you see this SUV. Okay. This is 25. What is that? Uh, this is the west side of the house. So the street would be to the north of this picture. Uh, it's the west side of the house. There's a pen here. And this is just a um, area where it seemed like a lot of trash had been being dumped for a long time. There was a large amount of trash on the side of the house. Okay. 26. What is that? That is the rear of the house. Um, it's a uh, uh, deck. This is outside of a bathroom that goes to a master bedroom up here, uh, the kitchen area. This is a pendant area where there's um, some pigs in this area here. That's literally a pig pen, correct? Yeah, that's, that's one right there. Did you go into that area yourself and actually search that area? I did uh, during a second search warrant of the house. I did go in that area. So there was a second search warrant executed, correct? Correct. All right. But you were familiar with that location from the first date? Yes. 27. You talked about something on the side of the house earlier. Is this a closer up view of that? It is. What is it? That's uh, just an area to the uh, on the west side of the house, a large amount of area where the trash had been being dumped. It appeared for a while. 28. Do you recognize that again? No. That's going to be the bottom of the case with tennis shoes. And those were actually seized on the day of this search warrant? Yes, they were. On the 30th. And then 29. What is that? Um, that would be the east side of the house. That's an SUV that was parked there. Um, this is that cement pad area I was talking about that goes right up to the house there. And this would be the bike that we've discussed already. All right. How long are officers out there? several hours. Were other officers seizing other items? Yes. Were there photographs of the interior of the home taken? I believe so, yes. Entire photograph of the whole inside of the house. Okay. In fact, was uh, Chief Smith one of the individuals out there? Yes, he was. Other FBI personnel, other state police personnel? Several people. Did you yourself uh, follow up in any way on that time information? So you're, you're, you've asked questions already about timing. When were you where? Correct. And uh, you were given some generalized times by the defendant the first time you spoke to him and the second time you spoke to him. I don't think you got any times in that phone call, right? No, there were no times in the phone call. All right. And, uh, did you try to follow up yourself with any of that information as it relates in particular to Donald Van Callis? Um, I never interviewed Donald Van Callis. There were other detectives then at that point were sent out um, to interview Donald Van Callis and follow up on the information that the defendant provided. Do you recall if you made contact with, in fact, Donald Van Callis' boss? Um, I did have uh, uh, come to a time where I talked to Donald Van Callis' boss over the phone 
And I don't want to know what he said, but I want to know what the purpose of that was. To verify times that uh, Donald Van Callis had left work on that day. And was that individual cooperative with you? Yes, he was. Do you remember his name, by the way? I said Billiao or Billow. Does that sound familiar? It does. I, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, and I wouldn't be able to spell it without looking, but that's, that would be the name. That, that gentleman was cooperative. Yes, he was. Did you continue to assist as requested <coughs> throughout the investigation? Yes. And at that point, you were not a detective sergeant, you were a detective trooper. Correct. Were you directing the investigation? I was not directing the investigation. And you indicated you participated in the second search warrant of the residence? Yes, I did. Take one moment, Judge. Next to the motorcycle. Right, the first time I saw the motorcycle, this would be that. Location. That's where you saw it. Correct. Okay. Um, this is the trail, the walking trail. Um, you familiar with that as a Macomb Orchard Trail? Macomb Orchard Trail. Correct. Yeah. You see it going basically from the edge of the map all the way to this edge. Of that and continues both ways out. Correct. Okay. Um, this would be the uh, the crime scene where the victim was found on that orchard trail, okay. orchard trail. Um, this would be Omo Road here. Omo Road? Yep, Omo Road. And um, farm orientation, north? North, correct. South? Correct. East? Yes. Yes. Um, this would be uh, location here is a driveway to a residence. That's where the phone was located, the victim's phone. Um, was located right off of the roadway there in brush area. Um, as you come in Armada here, just uh, outside the center, right off a block off the center of Armada, you have the Marathon gas station that we indicated. Um, just down the street from that, you have the, uh, the victim's residence. And then Armada Ridge Road continues outside of town going west, southwest, and you have uh, uh, 
the defendant's brother's home, Donald Van Callis' home over here. So get us, I don't know how familiar you are with the area outside of this map. I know you've become very familiar with it as a court in this investigation. Could you give us a general idea of where the defendant resided? Um, if the map were extended out, uh, the defendant would reside out like this way. Okay. For the record, could you indicate you north? Said? It would be north, um, northeast of the map. Thank you, sir. Northeast. And where, uh, why is that, Marathon, is that indicated because, or is that in there because the defendant indicated he went there? Yes, it is. Do you recognize this to be Armada right here? <coughs> this, this would be the village of Armada, yeah. questions just to make sure that I've got everything right, okay? Okay. I know about July 24, 2014, you worked for uh, the Michigan State Police, correct? Correct. You got, uh, I think, what us lay people sometimes call a Volvo VM or some information that they were interested in doing by the motorcycles, correct? Not till the 25th. Not till the 25th, okay. Correct. So when you got that, you happened to see a motorcycle parked uh, outside, but you later found out to be Mr. Moose's house, correct? Correct. And you took a picture of it? Yes, I did. You did not approach the house to see who was there or not or anything, correct? No, not at that time. Okay. And then, uh, based on follow-up and in consultation with your colleagues, you decided to go back to find out who the home owner was and find out about the bike, correct? Correct. And as soon as you got back, I believe you did find Mr. Jason, correct? <laughs> we did. And he did indicate to you that he was a long-term good personal friend of Mr. James Van Callis, correct? He did. And he also told you where he lived or whatever contact information you needed regarding Mr. James Van Callis, correct? Yes. Okay. Once you got that information, you went to Mr. James Van Callis' home, correct? Not, right. not, not right away, but when you did. Right, eventually that evening, yes. Eventually that evening, you went to Mr. Van Callis' house. And so when you went to Mr. Van Callis' house, to the best of your recollection, he opened the door, correct? He no. answered the door? No, his father. His father opened the door. And then when you asked for Mr. James Van Callis Jr., he, he came to the door, or came to you, correct? Yeah, he eventually came out to the door, correct? His well, father asked, called for him in the house, and he came to the door. All right, so just because, ladies and gentlemen, that the jury, you know, are listening to every word, when you say eventually, there was no hesitation on his part. You just mean he knocked, the senior Van Callis answered, he said, hey, come here, Jimmy, and he came, correct? Correct. So eventually, he was not meant to say there was any kind of stalling on his part, correct? No. Okay, so he came to the door, and he fully admitted that he was James Van Callis, correct? Yes, he did. Okay, you asked him about his activities, he completely, he told you he had been in Armada, correct? Yes, he did. That time, okay. He told you, you told him you were talking to him about a blue and white motorcycle. He said, yes, I have one and there it is, correct? Yes, he did. Okay. You asked him, did you ask him about a helmet? I believe I asked him what he was wearing that day. Okay. And he and told you what he, he was wearing. what he was wearing. Okay. And I think you indicated, sir, um, and I think I jumped ahead a little bit. I mean, you talking to him, Mr. Van Pallas Jr., Sr., and Crystal Stadler are talking to you out on the front porch, correct? They are. Crystal Stadler, just for the for the sake of the record, is the young lady that came out that was squatting down next to him when he's talking to you. Did you find that out subsequently? I did, yes. At that time, you didn't know that, correct? No, I didn't know who she was. James had, uh, Muse had, had said he lives there with his girlfriend and their kids, so when she came out, was next to him, roughly the same age, kind of put two and two together. Okay, so would you have any reason that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, should think that that female you saw that day was not Crystal Stadler? No. So in the presence of Crystal Stadler, he showed you the helmet, correct? Yes, he did. The shoes? Yes. Uh, some clothes, correct? No. 
No clothes? No, he didn't show any clothes. Okay, did you ask him for any clothes? I don't believe we asked him to bring the clothes out, no. Okay. Did you ask him for anything that he refused in any way, shape, or manner at that point, at that time? No. Okay. He admitted he went to, he told you he went to his brother Johnny's, right? Correct. He told you he went to the Tim Hortons in uh, Romeo, but didn't go in because he didn't see his brother's car, correct? Correct. He also told you that he went by Mr. Muse's house, and Mr. Muse wasn't home, so he didn't actually go in, correct? Correct. He also indicated to you that when he left approximately 10 minutes after his departure, he came back to the house because he forgot his sunglasses, correct? Yeah, he, he actually said about 10 miles. He 10 minutes. At time. Yeah, he said about 10 miles out. I don't know if you remember 10 miles that I, he came back, yes. I said corrected. You're right. Now, also, there were some, I think you probably remember from the exam, uh, there were some indications <coughs> that he wasn't sunglasses, but it was something to do with the toothbrush, right? That after toothbrush? Um, his brother down yeah, there? I was asked that in the exam. I, I didn't hear anything at that point. He didn't tell me anything about a toothbrush. I know that came up later in the investigation, um, but at that time when I asked him, he said it was sunglasses. Okay, and it's neither here nor there, but um, because there's no sunglasses or toothbrush that is tied to this case forensically, so it's really inconsequential what it was, right? For the most part. Correct. He forgot something, he went back to retreat, right? He forgot something, went back home. And when he did, he decided to engage with his father for a few moments, uh, until closer to 5.30 and then he left, right? That's what he explained, yes. Okay. And you chose not to photograph anything, correct? I mean, did you, at that point, did you photograph? When I was talking about. about. The first conversation that you had with him when you go out to the house, did you photograph the helmet at that point? Yes. Oh, okay, I stand corrected. What was it that you didn't photograph? We photographed the helmet, we photographed the shoes and the bike that night. Okay, and you did this all in front of the senior Mr. Mancallis and Crystal Stadler as well, correct? I believe they were both still out there. I don't I, I don't recall if uh, if uh, his father had went in the house at some point. But um, Stadler, Ms. Stadler stayed by her man, right? Yeah, I believe she was still out there on the porch. Okay, and at any time did you ask to take a photograph of anything and you were told not to? No. At any time did you ask to take anything with you forensically and were told not to? No. At any time did you ask to examine anything and were told not to or shown any hesitation that you could not? Did they ever, okay. Did you come to find out, uh, we saw the pictures and you know, all, all that garbage and everything else on the pig, pig sign. Did you, uh, all the pigs. Uh, did you uh, notice if there was any dogs there at that house as well? Yes, there were dogs. And do you remember approximately how many? That could have been more, right? Not a lot more. I, I do recall three dogs, uh, two larger dogs, and I recall a small dog, I believe, in a little um, pen inside the kitchen. Okay, and uh, just so the record's clear, you were not there for any purposes of finding out how many dogs they had or what type or dogs were. You weren't there to take inventory of any kind of dogs at that point, correct? No. Okay, so if there were more, you weren't looking for them and didn't see them, correct? Correct. So would it stand to reason, based on your knowledge of this area, that the field or the house outside as you come through the house might have some dog feces on it? Did you have to watch for some, or did you remember seeing any? Or? Um, not that I recall being that that was a focal point for me at that time. I mean, there was much more, more going on that, right, that I was focused on. Okay. But it wouldn't be unusual to, to see a house with three or more dogs and, and, and maybe some feces or some uh, body waste of the dogs in the yard, right? I, you know, oh, I would think it was unusual. You would almost expect it, right? It depends how often someone cleans up after their dogs. Okay, but if it's a rural area, they're probably going to let them out as opposed to walk them and then let them back in, right? <coughs> Again, there was a pen. I don't know if they kept the dogs in the pen, if they let them run loose out there. I'm not, I'm not really sure how they did it. Did you, in fact, then later uh, follow up and see if uh, uh, Mr. Van Callis's motorcycle was seen at uh, the Maricop? 
in, in our radar. Did I follow up personally? Yeah, did you see the video from the gas station? I know there was video obtained from the gas station that I did review. I did not uh, retrieve that uh, video, but yes, there was video retrieved. And then you did review it at least once, right? Yes, I did. I think you indicated that not too long after your direct involvement with this case came to a conclusion. Is that correct? In other words, is there anything else that you had to do with this case other than a after you got, got that stuff? Well, you, you're not the OIC, correct? I am not the OIC, no. You're not the co-OIC, correct? No. Okay. Did you subsequently go to Donald's house and interview him or other people? I did not interview Donald. I, I did in the meantime. There were other tips um, obviously coming in. There were some other tips that I went out on and followed up and made contact with other people, yes. Okay. Now, a lot has been made of the fact that when you first showed up, Mr. Van Callis was first of all cooperative and, and, and giving you everything that you asked for, correct? Correct. By way of information and, and substances. And same thing the second time when you went back, correct? Correct. And then when you Again, he talked to him on the phone, he said he's busy, he had some things to do, it couldn't give you a statement, and he might come in later, correct? No, he said that the second time I contacted him on Saturday morning, when I contacted him on the phone, was when he wasn't very friendly. Okay, and that's when he was irate and indicated something about this a witch hunt, and correct. you're taking everybody's cell phones and everything, correct? Correct. It's not illegal not to talk to the police, is it? No. It's not illegal to not make a written statement, is it? No, it's not legal. And nothing that he said in the two statements uh, to you was, there was any discrepancy. We had this little thing about the sunglasses and, and, and toothbrush, but other than that, he basically indicated each time, yes, I went to the Pride of America gas station. I went by Muse's house, he was at home. I went by Donnie's house, he was at home. I went to Tim Horton's, and I went back to Donnie's house, hung out, and got home about nine times or so. Is that pretty much what he told you both times? Yeah, both, both statements were pretty close in the fact, yes. And did you, in fact, go out and seek the video from the Tim Hortons and Romeo to see if, in fact, the defendant uh, had been there or not? I did not go out and seek any video. Uh, we have people text that, that do that more on a regular basis. Um, they were tasked with that. Okay, and he did indicate to you that he had not run in the, the Romeo Tim Horton right from the beginning, correct? Yeah, I believe he said he rode through the parking lot, is what he said, and he didn't see his brother there. Okay, and so he left, he never went. Correct. Okay. Okay. Did you remember, sir, did he indicate to you he was wearing camouflage pants? Is that ring it up? That's what he told me. Okay. Uh, an old pair of white case Swiss tennis shoes? Yes. A dark hoodie? A, a hoodie, I, I think he might have said dark. said it was a car heart and it said car heart down the sleeve. Okay. And, and a black helmet. Right. And a black helmet. Now, did you come to find out that shortly after the, that motorcycle, that helmet, those clothes and those shoes were taken into custody? No. I mean, you didn't take them, but they were I actually... I don't believe all that stuff was taken. I think uh, the uh, we weren't able to locate the hoodie. Okay. Well, at least the helmet, the motorcycle, and the shoes came into the police uh, inventory, correct? Correct. Those were those were taken at that search warrant on the 30th. Okay. Do you know if they were sent for testing by the Michigan State Police or anywhere? Were they sent anywhere for any forensic testing? Uh, I believe they were. I don't know the details of it, though. So you don't know if any blood, any fiber, any uh, leaves and stuff, foliage, anything like that came back on either the tires of the motorcycle or the helmet or uh, the shoes, correct? I'm, I'm not aware of any of those results, no. Well, it would be really important, though, in, in investigation. Not that it's wrong that you don't know, but it is important, right? It Absolutely. Is. Okay. And uh, to the best of your knowledge, have all three of those things remain in the custody of the police since then? If you uh, know. To the best of my knowledge, they do. In part of your training, did you ever have to go to the, uh, the not, not the Reed Institute or whatever you call that, that Reed School of Interrogation and Interviewing? Reed School? Yes, sir. First week of February coming up, I'm going. Okay. 
for the, not for the first time. Yes. Seriously? Yes. Uh, so I guess it would be futile to ask you about it because you've never went, right? Correct. Have you had some other interviewing or interrogation uh, yes. training? I've, I've been to several uh, interview and interrogation trainings. Yes. And uh, it's not unusual to ask a defendant uh, several times or suspect uh, what happened, right? No, it's not unusual. Okay. And because you're hoping that there would be some deviation in your story, right? Or at least you're, look, you're keeping your ears open to pick up for it, correct? Well, there's different different reasons. I mean, that could be one of them where you're going to ask somebody. You could ask somebody just to be more specific. It's more detailed information that you're going to follow up on. Um, you know, something that may come up later if they do change their story. Correct. Okay, and it's not unusual that when you ask a person multiple times, they get a little edgy or they get a little, because they're lay people, they're probably not being used to ask the same thing five times. What did you get off? That coffee, what did you have? And you found that to be the case where people become a little irritable on multiple askings of same or similar questions? Not always. But it does happen, right? It can. Okay, so if you went to go see Mr. James Van Callis and he told you everything, kept nothing from you, turned over to you whatever you wanted, allowed you to picture or take whatever you wanted and you, you did or you didn't do whatever, you did that the second time, and then eventually when he's finding out that the police is grabbing people's cell phones and all kinds of stuff and just keeping them, and he's like, I'm through. Talk to the that, would, that in itself would not be unusual, right? Or under. That itself, at that think, point, saying, you know what, I'm oh, I, think it, I think it is unusual. You do think it's unusual? Absolutely. So you would answer questions 10 times over and over. If I'm being questioned about the homicide of a young girl, absolutely. If you've already told everything you know, at that point, would you feel like? I would keep answering questions. If I can help the police, I would help them. Oh. And if you feel like you've done everything you can, I mean, that's, you know, let's be reasonable. If you feel like you've done everything you can, would you be like, okay, I'm going to keep coming and asking me a hundred times on the I'm not going to get upset if the police came back the second time and just asked me to write a written statement on something they have already asked me. Okay. I would write a written statement. I'm not changing anything. Okay, well, did anything in the, in the written statement turn out to be, I mean, in other words, this man didn't deny that that was his motorcycle, right? He didn't write a written statement. Well, no, but I mean, in other words, when you did talk to him in, in the conversations you had with him, he never said, oh my God, they're searching for a murder in Armada, I better say I've never been in Armada, correct? He said, I, I was in Armada that night. Correct. Okay, I have a blue and white motorcycle, and there it is, right? Correct. This is my armor, this is my shoes, this is my clothes, this is whatever, correct? And he basically to an extent. Okay. And he basically did the same thing the next day, correct? We okay. didn't ask for we didn't ask for the shoes or the helmet the next day. We came over there and I initially asked for a written statement. Okay. Which he did not want to provide. Okay, but he basically did reiterate because you said he said the same thing the second time. Yeah, right? I continued to ask him some questions before we left to go over what he had told us, yes. Okay. And I think you said though that he could tell you that he left this house approximately about 5, came back 10 miles out, left again about 5.30, and I think, if I remember correctly, you indicated he either was not able to tell you exactly what time he got to the home, or, or that didn't come up. Is that correct? Correct. You got back to this one. Somebody to write a statement. They 
hesitate only because one may be their spelling, their ability to write. Does that happen in the past? Or maybe they're electronic and haven't told anybody. Now, I'm not saying that's the case here. Okay. Have you ever come across that? I have not. Never? No, sir. And you do get statements sometimes where there's a lot of misspelling and grammatically incorrect sometimes, right? Yes, I do say that. And that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for substance. I'm, I'm just looking for that person to give me a statement. If I need to, um, there, I, I always offer, I've had people tell me that they don't spell good. I've offered to them that if they want to tell me exactly their statement, I will write it down. They can review it after and sign that statement if that's a problem. Okay. Now, if there is, uh, you know what the allegations in this case are about uh, how April uh, Monsef was attacked, correct? Correct. Okay. And you know that at least, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen the video the animation from the FBI, but uh, the thing took about 10 or 15 minutes for, for the alleged assault to take place. Would you have expected some exchange in DNA between the parties? You know what, I'm no object, Your Honor. I have no idea he has any knowledge in that field. And I agree, there's been no foundation that he has any, any knowledge, expertise. Play that marathon video. Would you be able to identify it? The one that you saw, that you reviewed in uh, this case, correct? Would I know if it's the marathon video? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. You've seen it. Could we play that video, please? Marathon video. Do you want to have him show up? I mean, the only way we can play it right now is right to the jury. So I think you better have him come back here, look at it, because we're not really supposed to display something to the jury until it's authenticated. Okay, well that's fine. If you want to do that, we can have them take a look at it, make sure that's one that you saw before we play. Right. Can you use the rest of the table while we're doing that? <coughs> Go ahead, knock yourself off. That's fine, someone's using the rest of the table. 